I've seen so many videos of the circle of fifths and they're all great, but there's one problem with all of them. They're not applicable to what you're playing. It's just like a big, huge mental masturbation. Look at all the things I know, but how to apply it to the guitar. So in this video, I want to show you one, how to know all your notes of either a major or a minor scale using the circle of fifths. Number two, how to harmonize those scales and create chord progressions in each key. And third, how to create your own fail proof chord progressions. Okay, let's dive into my computer and I'll show you exactly what I'm saying. There you have it, the famous circle of fifths. So this is how I use the circle of fifths. First, we're gonna figure out what notes are inside of each scale. So for example, let's just pick a note and we're gonna pick a note on the outer layer, on the gray layer, which is gonna be, for example, I don't know, C, okay? So that's my starting note, that's my root note. Now I want to know all the notes around that C, in the key of C, what are all the notes of the C major scale? Okay, so I start with the C, and I'm going to choose the ones next to them, and the ones beneath the ones I choose. So all this, sorry for, I'm using my mouse for this, all these notes are inside of the C major scale. See, I chose this one the ones to the side, and the ones below. But there's also a little tail that we're also going to choose. So all these notes are inside of the C major scale. Let's choose another note. And we're going to draw the exact same pattern, and you'll see all those notes are going to be from the, for example, I don't know. Let's choose A. So I'm going to choose the ones next to A, the ones below, and that little tail. So I'm just gonna draw this little pattern like this, right? All those six notes and this little tail. Now notice there's minors in the inner circle. We're just choosing notes right now. Notes don't have minor or major, they're just notes, okay? All right, so we can do this for any, any note. A flat, E flat, B flat, whatever note you just draw that little um that little shape and it'll give you all the notes of that scale but it also works for the inner circle so for example uh, let's say you want to know the minor scale okay of f sharp haha <laughs> so i just choose f sharp the ones on the side the ones on the other layer and i draw the tail again so i go like this draw the tail and those are all my notes of an f sharp minor scale let's do it for another let's i don't know for an f minor scale so the ones on the on the sides the ones on top right that's going to be my little shape and then i just need the tail which is also included. So we've got seven notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this happens every single time, no matter what note you start with. If you want a major scale, you use the outer, outer layer, the gray layer, okay? You choose that note, draw that little diagram, and you've got all the notes of a major scale. If you want a minor scale, you choose the note on the minor on the on the inner circle, right? Plus major is big, minus minor is little. So that's how it works to know any note of your scales. Number two is you can harmonize those notes. So what does harmony mean? It means adding more notes and playing them all together. Simple terms. So let's get again, let's just start with C because it's easy to visualize, right? So that's our note. We want a major scale of C. So we just draw that little pattern. And now we know all those notes. We've got a C, an F, a G, a D, an A, an E, and a B note inside that major scale. If we harmonize every one of those notes, they turn into all of these chords. Isn't that cool? So all of those chords, C, F, G, D minor, A minor, E minor, and B minor, 
belong to the key of C, with an exception, which is this one over here, which I'll talk in just a second. But let's just try it for another one, okay? Let's say you want to play in the key of D. Okay, so I'm going to choose the ones on the side, draw my little pattern again, right? All that. And that little tail. And all of these chords, not notes anymore, chords belong to the key of D. So let me try that. So I'm going to play D. Let's see if they work. D, G, A, E minor, B minor, F sharp minor, D. All of those chords belong to the key of D major. But we can also do this for minor keys. So what chords belong to a minor key? The same thing, let's say C minor, in the key of C minor, right? We choose this, we draw our little pizza diagram right there, I get all this slice of pizza, right? And that's that, the tail over here. So all of these chords, the six chords, plus this one, which is a diminished chord, we'll talk about it later belong to the key of C minor. If I play any of these chords to a C minor, it's going to sound fantastic. So why would you want to know this? This is why. You've probably seen a 1-4-5 chord progression, right? A 1-4-5 chord progression in the key of A. What does that mean? Okay, so that means we're in the key of A major, not in the key of A minor, in the key of A major, and we're going to draw our little shape over here and this is how we figure out where the one the four and the five is we're going to do a little crisscross let me let me do this in the key of in the key of c let's do it in the key of c because it's easier to see and then we'll do it on the on the other keys so this always works for any key for any note for any chord okay so in the key of c let me just do this right here. We're playing in the key of C. That's our one. That's our root. That's our home, our home base. Everything is going to revolve around this chord, okay? So this is one. The second chord, we just crisscross down to our left. That's our second chord in the chord progression. That's number two, okay? Then we crisscross again. That's number three. Then we crisscross again, that's number four. And then we crisscross again, that's number five. And then we crisscross again, that's number six. And then we crisscross again, and that's the seventh chord in the key of C. Let me do that again. This also means that this is note number one. In the C major scale, note number two, three, four, five, six, and the seventh note in the in the C major scale, and then we go back to one again. Okay, so you start with one, you crisscross down to your left for two, you crisscross for three, do it again for four, do it again for five, do it again for six. And then you jump over to the tail, the last one, for seven. So if you see a one four five, we're going to play a one four five in the key of C. And you're like, ah, these people know so much music theory. No, 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 no. So what's the one? This one, right? That's a C. So we're going to play a C. What's the four? So we go one, two, three, four. Ah, that's an F. Cool. What's the five? One, two, three, four, five. Ah, G. So a 145 in the key of C is C, F, G. C, F, G. Back to one again. That's a 145 in the key of C, okay? But what if we have a 1564? Uh-oh. So we've got a 1, a 5, a 6, and a four. Okay, so what does this mean? One, five, six, four. Let's start again. A one, we know it's a C. That's our, our key, our, our root note, our root chord 
are the key of the of the chord progression, right? Then a five, let's count. One, two, three, four, five. We've got a G. Look at that little six. Why is it written in 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 small caps? And because it's a minor chord. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, A minor. There we go. And a four again. One, two, three, four is an F. Awesome. So that chord progression, that one, five, six, four in the key of C is C, G, A minor, F. And back to one again. Awesome. But what if we want to play that a one, five, six, four in the key of A? Okay, let's do that real quick. So we've got A over here. That's our root note. That's our the key of the chord progression we're going to play in. Okay, and we're going to go like this. We're going to draw that little pizza slice, right? And we're going to start again. So a one is an A. Now we're going to crisscross. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five. A five is an E. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six is an F. This is terrible writing. Sharp minor. <laughs> this is horrible. And a four, so it's a one, two, three, four is a D. All right, so now I know how to play a one, five, six, four in the key of C, and I know how to play a one, five, six, four in the key of A because I just have to write that down, right? So it's A, E, F sharp minor, D. It's the same thing, only in a different key. And you can do this for any key. So imagine you're doing this in the key of A flat. The horror, what's happening? No problem. Let's do the same thing. I'm just gonna circle all those notes around the A flat, plus the diminished chord. And I'm going to start one, so that's A flat, right? Two, three, four, five, so it's E flat. Awesome. See how easy this is? So now we've got a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got an F minor. And a four is one, two, three, four, so it's D flat. And that's a one, five, six, four in the key of A flat. Pretty simple, right? All right, and the third thing I use the circle of fifths for is to write my, my own chord progressions. Let's see how this works. So let's say you want to write a chord progression, but you have no clue on where to start. Simple, just pick any one of those notes and draw that little pizza thing. I'm gonna pick whatever. I'm gonna... Play in the key of G, because I like G, and I'm just going to do this. I'm not going to do the diminished chord. That might be for another for another video. Let's just focus on these, right? So any, so if I start on a G, any one of these chords is going to go well together with the G. So let's see, I'm going to write a G. Let's try G, A minor. C, this is terrible writing, and D, and then go back to G. Let's see how that works. So it's G. Awesome, it sounded amazing. Okay, let's see, I'm gonna start with G again, and then I'm gonna go to B minor. No, let's go to E minor. I'm just guessing, I, this is not prepared. I just wanna show you how all of these chords go well together, right? And then we're gonna to jump to C. All right, let's try that. So G. Awesome, beautiful. B minor. Yeah. Sounds beautiful.
beautiful, right? So you can do this with any combination and it's going to sound fantastic. Throw them in, start creating your own chord progressions. Hope it helped and I'll see you in the next one. By the way, this is just a tiny snippet, one of the chapters, not even the whole chapter of my new book, The Ultimate Guitarist Chord Book. You can check it out if you want down in the description. It's pretty cool.